Hey everyone, once again, this is Dynamics Unplugged, and today we got a little session coming to you on product lifecycle state. This is a feature that I waited a long time for, could have used it in previous versions of Dynamics. Um, really simple, cool little feature, comes with the engineering change management module, so make sure you enable that license configuration key, uh, and also make sure that you enable those features in the feature management workspace. Um, but once you have that uh, enabled, what you'll find is under the product information management module, when you go to setup, you have a uh, product lifecycle state, might may have already been there, but once you enable the engineering change management module, you get this enabled business processes feature. Um, so this is a really good tool uh, that improves upon a gap or an inefficiency that we had in previous versions of Dynamics where you had very high level stoppages um, for a product's life cycle, essentially, for lack of a better word. If you have a PLM type system, you had stop flags under default order settings for coverage, but you didn't have anything more granular. So it was really difficult, for example, engineering companies uh, to manage new products and, and slowly release them to the rest of the supply chain. It was really hard to obsolete products in a way that, that truly made sense. Uh, so now there's this feature where at a transaction type level, um, you can set up different policies. So when uh, when each different transaction is, a, is enabled, that essentially means that you are allowed to do that transaction. So an active status, for example, would most likely allow all transaction types. Uh, these names of these different product lifecycle states are, are purely for what makes sense for your business. So this is just a sample set of, of what you could be using as a naming convention. Blocked would mean that transaction type is not allowed if this product lifecycle state belonged to your release product. And enabled with warning would mean it's allowed, but present a warning at these various transactions. So let's go ahead and look at how we can apply that to an item. Uh, and the other thing to note here is you also have an is active for planning flag checked. So if you don't want uh, items to factor into MRP, even when they do have demand, uh, this would need to be uh, unchecked. Um, so things like obsolete items where maybe you don't want uh, to drive new orders, you could have is uh, active for planning unchecked, but obviously items in full sale you would. So then we're going to navigate to our release products. Uh, and you can see typically one of the default fields that shows in that grid form is the product lifecycle state. So right now my Drew's Gray IPA is in an active status. Uh, and if I were to go into the item details, you would see that right there in the general tab as well. So I'm going to go ahead and update that to end of life, for example. Go ahead and click save. And if we look back at end of life, we can see that there are some blocked um, block transactions for that particular product lifecycle state. So item forecast, for example, under planning is blocked. Purchase orders are blocked. So what that would mean is if I go and do any of those transactions, I, sh I should get an error essentially. So I'm going to go to the demand forecast. I'm going to click new and I'm going to try to create a new forecast for this item. I'm going to go ahead and save. And you can see right away I do get an error that Drew's Gray IPA is in a status which has the process item forecast to be blocked. So it's actually saying that I shouldn't be using that transaction. So I can't create forecast against that since we're actually treating that item uh, in an end of life scenario. I'd get a similar error uh, if I went and tried to create out a purchase order for this item as well. Um, so real easy way to kind of manage more granular level of tracking of which transactions are allowed. Now, the other thing that's really cool is kind of that end of life or obsolete type scenario. You want to be able to systematically figure out which items it makes sense to remove from product catalogs. You know, maybe you have an integration with your website and you don't want to show discontinued parts. Uh, and you don't want your vendor portal even on the purchasing side to uh, view parts that aren't available uh, for use yet, that's when you can start to 
look at some of the other features that are available. So under um, our, our periodic tasks section of product information management, we have the change lifecycle for obsolete products. So this is a query based tool that allows you to automatically update or just run a simulation to figure out which items this would affect um, to automatically update the product lifecycle state based on um, really two sets of, of criteria and then you can filter further down on types of items. But um, one is, has there been transactions? Um, this, this bottom one here, has there been transactions in X number of days? So if a, a product hasn't had a, a sale or a receipt in you know the past year, past two years, we automatically want to consider it for obsolescion, uh, obsolescion. And when was it created? If it's been created in the last 120 days, maybe it's OK that uh, it doesn't have a lot of transactions yet because that's an immature product in our industry or something like that. Um, but using the combination of those two settings to query on your items and figure out which items uh, it might be possible to automatically update and obsolete. So really cool little feature comes with engineering change management. You don't have to use all the other features of ECM to uh, to use this tool, um, but really, really simple and uh, a great feature for those looking to boost on their PLM type functionality and processes in D365. Thanks all.